In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, what I want to do is to uh, teach you how you can make a rotating tower like this, which I can also up, uh, update the uh, base polyline like this point. As I just move it, it's going to update the tower. Uh, we can change or increase or decrease the number of the uh, repeating steps or decrease it. If you want to decrease it, you have to double click this. And then you can also change the rotation degree. So you can see that I can do a more uh, degree for the rotation or decrease that. So it's like this. And we're going to model this in Grasshopper. Before that, we have to install the uh, Anomni plugin, which you can go and put it in the file special folder and at the end in the components folder. Okay, uh, remember to install that and then restart your Rhino Grasshopper. Uh, okay, before we get started, remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel because we have weekly, uh, weekly tutorials. And also, if you want to learn, uh, the advanced lessons of these tutorials because we have simplified these lessons for you to get started uh, You can also enroll in our course. I'm going to put the, uh, the Folder here the videos you can watch for the lessons for the course and get enrolled in it Okay, let's get started from scratch uh, for the starting point what I want to do is to uh, put the bifocals in here so you can see uh, after installing the anomaly plugin you have it like here and there are two models there is a classic and a fast a classic is a little bit slower so it's going to show you the step-by-step -step results and fast is going to just go to the end so what I want to do is to use the classic loop start loop end and then disconnect the top here we go and uh, now what we have to do is to bring the data here so the data comes uh, from the uh, this input goes inside the loop whatever happens here doesn't matter then it has to go outside uh, the data again so remember you can uh, make a loop easily with the anemone uh, plugin here okay uh, I'm going to just simply draw a polyline maybe this is what we want to use and bring that inside so because we want to work with a curve, we have to go to the params menu and use this curve here, okay? And set this to here and give that to the data. And I, what I usually do is to just control C, control V this and bring it here so I can just control it better and then put it out uh, for the data. Uh, okay, the number of times we want to repeat this is controllable, so we just maybe say from uh, three times to 16 whatever it is and let's say repeat and give this to the repeating input okay we're going to control that right uh, later okay now what I want to do is to rotate this simply just type rot and for here I'm going to rotate this uh, rotate 3d and give this to the geometry okay the center of rotation is going to be on the edge of the polyline. So what we have to do is to simply just go to the curve and use this explode thing in the utility. It's really easy. Explode the curve. Now you can see that it has four segments. Uh, I'm going to pick one of these segments for rotation. Uh, you can do that by going to the sets list item and selecting one of these segments. So you can see that this is the zero, the index zero is going to be here. One, two, three. Uh, let's just zoom in and put that plus. So we actually have all of these edges and we can decide which one we want to rotate the results. Okay, uh, for uh, the point which we want to rotate the building, we have to go to the curve section and select this point on curve. So I'm going to put that on maybe edge two and you can see that I can move this uh, alongside the edge. Now we can give this to the center of rotation. And the default axis of the rotate 3D is Z direction, which is okay because we want to rotate this uh, around the Z direction. Let me just show you this is what's going to happen. And because we want to make this into a degrees, I'm going to right click on the angle and select degrees because it's easier. You can see if I give this a 25 degrees, uh, it's going to rotate this around that point. And you can see that we can move that uh, wherever we want. For now, uh, we have to give this a number slider which will control 
uh, the rotation. So what I want to do is to zoom here and put the plus, which is D1. I'm going to say that this is rotation, just so I can understand what I'm doing here, and give this also a plus and name it rotation. Okay, what we want to do is for the rotation is maybe 20 degrees and bring this rotation to the angle. That's it. And because we have to also uh, end the loop, we have to also give that rotation to the rotation because it means that it's always going to be that 20 degrees. Uh, okay, the output of the curve is ready. Let me give it to the data, which was the curve. And you can see that I can increase the steps, but I can't see, if I double click this, it's going to run. But I can't see the uh, previous steps, so I'm going to go here at the end, a right click and select the record data. So I'm going to just record this data and double click on this so you can see the results. Okay, that is really cool. Uh, we have the curves. So that was how you can do it. If you change the location, you have to double click this to run it. Uh, and then you can also change the degrees. You can see the results while I'm playing with this. Okay. So this is how it's going to work. It's really easy. What we want to do is to finally extrude that up to make it like a building. So first of all, uh, let's just put a curve inside. The first curve was this one and bring it at the end. And with a shift key, I'm going to add all of the other curves we added here. Because uh, the Anemone plugin is going to put that into groups with zeros, I'm going to flatten this so everything is going to be like into one groups. And if you don't know about flatten and graft, again, I'm going to put the tutorial about flatten and graft here so you can understand. So let's just flatten this so everything goes into one group. That's it. Let's just connect a surface from the Parms menu to make it into a surface. And now extrusion. So I'm going to extrude that in the Z direction. And because we want to give that uh, each of these uh, curves and addition extrusion, I'm going to use a series. Okay, uh, the starting of this is going to be the height of each of those uh, levels of the building maybe we need. So I'm going to just put uh, like 12.5 to the start. This is going to be the start of the building. Each of the steps are going to be also 12.5 uh, because we want to increase that. We can also decrease or increase that later. And the count of the uh, series is important because it's related to the number here, 12, uh, which was actually the number we gave here, plus 2. So uh, instead of getting caught in the numbers of counting these things, we can go to the sets and select this list length, a really cool tool to count the number of the curves here. Okay, So you can see if I connect that, it's going to say we have 12 of them. And you can give that to the count. That is uh, the extrusion. We can just go to the uh, display and connect a custom preview to that. So you can see the results. And uh, I usually also connect a surface uh, BREP edges tool like this one to also show the edges. Okay. So that's how you can do that with the Anomaly plugin. It's really easy. You can see that I can increase the number of rotations, degrees of the rotations. Uh, I can increase the steps like that. And if you change the location of the rotation, I have to double click this. If you want to change also the location when you just change it, it's going to run, you have to put it into another input. Okay. So that's how you can do that. And by increasing the degree of rotation, for example, if I just put that uh, like to zero, it's going to just go up like this. And if I just go to maybe 30 degrees, uh, you can see that it's going to go inside it. Uh, we can also play with these points maybe. And produce uh, something fantastic like this, which we can increase or decrease the height of it, like that. Uh, at the end, maybe sometimes we want to just unify them. Uh, because of the intersection, sometimes we get an error, but let's just check this out. Intersection, and like using this tool, which is called Solid Union, 
if we can unite all of them together, which will give us the results. If I bake it, you can see it's going to unite them together. Okay, so that was the tool. I usually turn that off because it's going to slow your slow down your process. Just change things uh, and check out the results. And when you are okay with that, then turn on that uh, solid union thing. Okay, and then we can also change the location to zero and double click this, so it's going to be on the edge of it. And it's really beautiful. We can play with these edges to produce different results like that. Okay. Okay, I hope that this tutorial is useful for you. Uh, if you like it, remember to thumbs up this tutorial and comment below how was the how was the tutorial, how was the steps. Uh, I thought that it's going to be a shorter one so you can understand uh, the Anomaly plugin, how it's uh, operating, and then you can also use this technique of uh, saving the data and then extruding that later. Okay, and if you want to also learn more advanced about this lesson, this particular lesson, uh, I'm going to put up another tutorial which I will add too many, uh, add uh, more inputs, maybe scaling, uh, maybe changing the location and those things. Uh, so if you want to also learn that, just try to uh, check out the course lessons. We're going to put that down inside the course lessons. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.